Now it's a real pleasure to introduce uh, my friend uh, that is also an eminent uh, personality and travels around the world uh, as a president uh, of the <laughs> Bateson International Institute uh, to do with many way of communication. She's a filmmaker, she has contributed to some uh, of the concept uh, of uh, system theory and she's a wonderful person that have the honor to know since uh, she was uh, in the belly of her mother. Uh, Nora Bateson, thank you for being here. This subject of education is something that's very dear to my heart. Um, and I would like to start with the recognition that those of us who are alive now are alive during a particular period of human history in which there is enormous change. In which, in fact, the future of our species, along with thousands of others, is in question. This is relevant because there is a moment at hand where we must acknowledge that although the history of humanity and all of our accomplishments, however beautiful and terrible they may have been, however incredibly full of genius or greed or corruption, whatever artistry and philosophy we have come to, it wasn't enough. There is more. And the time for that acknowledgement is now. One of the things that we have um, underestimated and overlooked is what our inquiry might provide for us around the questions of what does it mean to live in interdependency. Complex living systems are by nature interdependent. They are required for their vitality to engage in interrelational, communicational interaction. However, our way of studying the world has largely been to study things out of context. Research has been developed since the 1600s as a way of pulling things out of context, studying them in their detail, and getting wonderful knowledge about them. The problem is we didn't put them back. We don't have an understanding, really, of even how to develop information that is relational information about how interdependency really, how vitality is really created. And without that information about vitality, we are not able to respond to the complexity of our world. Um, I think we need to ask ourselves, first of all, a question of identity. Who are we? And not just who were we or where did we come from, okay? This is not just a question of looking backward. This is a question of who are we now? Because we can look back and we can justify all the things that have been done and all the knowledge that has been produced. But until we ask who are we now, our very identities will keep reflecting backward and not forward. Now we are in another position. Now the interdependency that exists not only interculturally, but between species, and most importantly for our discussions right now, intergenerationally. 
Um, I had an incredible father. Um, some of you may be familiar with Gregory Bateson's work. And he was uh, just by his own nature, but also by virtue of his studies and his interests, he was focused on this question of relationality. And he was, in an uncanny way, able to see life both in its detail and in its contextual relationships. Um, as his daughter, I grew up in a household in which the currency of our world was not who was right or who had authority, but what was it possible to learn? Okay, let me just give you an example of what that looked like. In intergenerational mutual learning, adults and children are capable of learning together. It looks like this. My father would go out of his way to say things during the day, like, I used to think things were like this, but now I'm seeing something different. He would verbalize his capacity to recognize his own mistakes. He would verbalize his own oversights and show me what he had learned. And when he did this, I learned three things. I learned what he was learning, whatever it was, whether it was from the fish tank or the weather or the scientists that were visiting or something that I said or observed. I learned what he was learning, okay? I also was learning to learn. That's a second order learning. I was learning that learning is something that's, that's important. But the third thing that I learned is something that I think is really important for us in our discussions in these coming days, which is sort of the meta question. I learned that it's possible to have an environment in which there is intergenerational learning mutually taking place all the time. His authority was not premised upon his rightness. His authority was premised upon his ability to learn with me. My respect for my father was not given because he was right. It was given because there was a capacity for authenticity and the, the ability to respond in new ways, to recognize that we are in this together. Um, my own daughter caught me on this one. And um, she did a, an introduction for a, a film that I made that hopefully you'll get to see in the coming days. And as she was coming off the stage and I was going on the stage at her university uh, at Bard College in the States, she said to me, Mom, don't you dare go out there and tell those kids the future's in their hands. <laughs> she said, we are so sick of hearing that. And then she caught me and she said, because you taught me, it's in the relationship. The future is in the relationship between the generations. It's in what the older generations can learn and the space that we can make for new ways of perceiving, new ways of responding to the ecology that we live within. Okay. I think that that requires that we create a context for the contexts. Education has got to provide another place in which we can have inquiry and exploration, discovery and insights across generations about this thing that we frankly do not understand, which is how contextual process takes place. Um, this is more than interdisciplinary. This requires multiple ways of knowing. 
multiple cultural perspectives, multiple contextual processes. No living system exists in just one context. Our capacity to respond to complexity is going to require a familiarity with our own complexity. It takes not only intellectual, but all levels of perception, sensorial, emotional, intuitive, artistic. Um, and the third thing I want to bring in is the notion that what education, our education system has done so far has been fairly effective. That the education system has been a fairly good piece of the puzzle of the institutions of our world. It has provided an environment in which children and students developed perception of a world that was divided into silos, into ideas, into various pieces. And if you ask a university to develop a jungle, what will you get? A plants department, a reptile department, a weather department, but what you won't get is the interdependency. So up until now, our world has depended upon the success of, of, of coming generations to perceive and to take part in this siloed process of thinking, in this epistemology that allowed for these sorts of separations. Our economy is based upon it, our understanding of medicine is based upon it, our understanding of politics, of all sorts of institutional processes. It's like a cookie cutter stamp of the same pattern of thinking. And the education system fed into it beautifully. Now, if we continue to generate this kind of epistemological approach, this kind of thinking, the human species, along with thousands of others, will die. This cannot continue. We have created a kind of ecology, only it was an ecology of our institutions. And that ecology is fatefully out of sync with the ecology of the biosphere, with the ecology of the changing biosphere that will require a changing, flexible process of intergenerational, intercultural inquiry to better understand and to better respond to. Thank you. <laughs>